Well, now we continue. The woman had just said, you see, uh, how come you, a Jew, are talking to me? And I'm not only a Samaritan, I'm a woman. And it's the middle of the day. There's nobody else around. Somebody sees this. Uh, Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, drops all that. Starts right after her. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that's saying to you, give me a drink, you, would have, you might have asked of him and he would give to you living water. When a living water, Mayim uh, Chayim means moving water. It's not in a cistern or in a jar or in a pond. It's moving. More air. It's beautiful. That's living water. But of course it comes to mean so much more um, even as you see in this text uh, he'll give you living water. Um, so she says oh, she's a little nicer to him. See, now he's, he's offering her something. So she says Kyrie not Lord yet but Sir uh, you don't have a bucket and this is a deep well. Yeah. How are you going to get this living water? This is one of these lovely misunderstanding questions that are throughout John, right? Uh, how are you going to get any water out of this? Okay? Uh, now, what is this water? He's called it the gift of God. He's called it water, living water. Basically, it's the Holy Spirit. How do I know that? Because in 7, 37 to 39, it says, you know, uh, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me. You see? Uh, let him believe in me. I'm paraphrasing. For out of his midst, as scripture says, out of his midst will flow rivers of living water. Whose midst? Jesus is. He's the rock. Comes out of him. Rivers of living water. So she's asking this question. Lord, uh, sir, you don't have a, a bucket and the well is deep. How are you going to get any uh, water? And uh, um, I seem to have lost my place here. Oh, here it is. Are you greater than our father Jacob? Right away. I mean, like Jacob gave us this well. Are you greater than Jacob? You're going to make this living water? Uh, it's one of those lovely questions. Maybe you are greater than Jacob. You have something about you. You know, same a challenge at the same time. This is so beautiful. And Jesus is so gentle. He wants to win over. Will you hear him at the end of this text? Exulting because the harvest is coming toward him. He loves us. Okay. Are you greater than our father Jacob? Who gave uh, to us this well? Uh, that we could drink out of it, um, and um, his sons and his flocks. Are you are you better than Jacob? Jacob is the father of the race. Okay, Jesus answers. This is such a dialogue. You could spend hours just listening to them, and let the Holy Spirit open it up for you. Jesus answered her and said, "Everybody drinking from this water will thirst again." Um, but uh, uh, there's more am I now um, everyone drinking of this water will thirst again um, but uh, one who drinks of this other water that I will give will never thirst it's the water that I give now, what's this water? It's the Holy Spirit. But it's broader. It's the Holy Spirit and everything he brings. Because he's already said to her, if you knew the gift of God, the Doria, Tutewu, that's the gift. What's the gift? The Holy Spirit. St. Thomas asks a question. Is it right to call the Holy Spirit a gift? He says, yes. Why? Because a gift is something given to you by another to possess 
and enjoy. And the Father, through Jesus, gives us, gives us to possess and enjoy the blessed Holy Spirit. And you know, we're getting to the point like those poor guys in Ephesus. We never heard there was a Holy Spirit. Life of our life, movement of our movement, strength of our weakness, a delight. The only reason we can get anywhere. Okay. Um, and so, but the water will be this well, this fountain of water stringing, springing up to life eternal. Now she's really wondering. So the woman says to him, the eternal part she probably doesn't get, you know, but she said, Kyrie again, sir, maybe a little more serious now, my lord, you know, give to me this water so that I don't have to thirst and come here to draw water. Jesus all of a sudden changes the subject. He says, go call your husband and bring him here. The woman says, I don't have a husband. Jesus says, Kalosipas, you've spoken well. <laughs> that is saying, I know who you are. He says, you've spoken well. You don't have a husband. And the one you have now is not your husband. You've had five. Now, could this allude to the five, there's actually seven gods brought in by these people. These Samaritans, of course, are a mixed race. Because when the Assyrians conquered, they shipped all the Jews out and brought in everybody else. Prisoners like Australia, anything. And of course, they are beholden to the Assyrians, so they're going to behave themselves. Um, when he says that about the five husbands, she says, Lord, sir, and now she has another title for him. I see you are a prophet. She's growing. She's not so happy. She's not sure she wants to hang around with a prophet. But at least uh, she gets the idea uh, that he's a prophet. So then she starts a theological discussion. You see, our fathers uh, worshipped on this mountain and you people say that Jerusalem is the place where one must worship. Jesus says, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem uh, will they be worshipping. Huh? You people worship, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We Jews worship what we know. Why? Because salvation is from the Jews, and it is. Mary, the fruit, the flower of Israel, gave birth to the Savior of the world. And she was prepared by a millennium of God's action in Israel so that at least these people might understand what was going on. It took a millennium. And the holy writings and the holy people. So, because salvation... The whole thing it comes from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and it is now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Which means, as Father de la Poterie said beautifully, if I can find a quote for you, worship in spirit and truth is to worship him in Christ the Father, in Christ the truth, under the illumination and inspiration of the spirit of truth. That's what Jesus is talking about. Worshiping the Father, you know, in the heart of Christ, moved by the Spirit of Christ. Worship the Father. That means really worship Him, love Him, trust Him. Finally see who the Father is. Okay. Um, for indeed, the Father seeks such worshipers of Himself. God is Spirit. And as for those who worship him, it is in spirit and truth that they must worship. She's had enough of that. She wants to find out now who he is. You can see her grow, right? He's evangelizing her. 
woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming, HaMashiach. This means Christ. When he comes, he will declare all things to us. That was a Jewish and a Samaritan tradition. Jesus says, Egoimi, I am. I am he, in English, but in Greek, Egoimi. He's not just saying, I am he. He's saying, I am. It's one of these beautiful things that John does several times in his gospel. I am the one speaking to you. Now the break in the tension. Upon that, his disciples came and they were amazed that he was speaking with a woman. I mean, that's the culture. What's she talking to her for? You know, in an open place, nobody else around? That's not good. (laughs) No one said, though, what do you seek or why are you speaking with her? The woman left her jar. That means she wants the water. And she's excited. And she went off into the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Now she's proud of it. This man has told me, but he told me in a way that didn't humiliate me. So I'm glad to tell the world what I did so I can tell you about what he did. Could he be the Messiah? Could he be the Christos? They went out from the town and were coming to him. Now we have another break. In the meanwhile, his disciples were asking him, Rabbi, not Kyrie, that's the do call on the times, but Rabbi eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat which you do not know. So the disciples were saying to one another, Did someone bring him something to eat? Jesus said, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and that I bring his work to completion. The word to completion here is the word on the cross. It is completed. I did complete his work. And then he dies. And as he dies, he breathes forth the Spirit. Wow, this is such beautiful stuff, huh? So then, he's probably looking at the crowd coming from the town. He says, look! Look at the fields. They're white for the harvest. It's a proverb. They're not white. It's four months away. But... uh, The reaper is already receiving his pay. That's himself. And gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower, the prophets, you, will rejoice together. And this saying is true. One is the sower and the other the reaper. I sent you to weep where you have not labored. Others have labored and you have come into their work. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, Abraham, Samuel. And you've come into their work. Now from that town, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman witnessing, he told me everything I ever did. So they asked him to remain with them two days, and he did. And many more believed of his word, and they said to the woman, no longer because of your declaration do we believe. We have heard and we know that this man, and look how far their faith has gone, this man is the savior of the world. Now, I want to give you just one text. This is, remember I was speaking about by experience, those who come to intimately know these realities by experience. That's the law, the whole uh, lived theology. This is from Conchita, a woman, Mexican mystic. I have no other food. This is Jesus talking to her. I have no other food from the first moment of my incarnation than this divine will. It is through it I came into the world. Through it I was raised above the earth to consummate my life in the cruelest of martyrdoms. It then soothed my agony. The will was my sole solace while on earth. I would have suffered a thousand deaths to fulfill it. Amen.